My name is Braden Grolke and I farm around Wilderado, Texas. We're kind of in an area that's our aquifer is declining and so we're trying to conserve as much water as we can and it makes it tough on dry years like this year. Today it's raining a little. It's very appreciated and welcomed right now. This was a circle of corn here. We harvested it a few days ago and then we're doing a study on the circle beside it and it's in cotton this year right now. You know, you get wild weather and you get all sorts of different conditions and you're trying to figure out what do we need to do. We've been doing a lot of things with the NRCS and with Texas corn producers. I like learning as well and it's a lot of data there that maybe I can make myself better with. The purpose of our research is to evaluate conservation or soil health management systems looking at cover crops and crop rotations and the impacts that these systems have on soil health and irrigation water use efficiency. Through this collaboration with USDA and RCS and with the Texas Corn Producers Board, we've been able to work directly with the farmers and to evaluate the practices that they're implementing on their farms. My name is Kelly Kettner. I'm a fifth generation farmer outside of Muleshoe, Texas. My predominant crops are cotton, corn, sorghum, and wheat. How long have you been using cover crops? Uh, about 10 years. And what are some of the major benefits, I guess, that you've seen? Better water infiltration. Mm -hmm. We've had lots of research in the past and other projects looking at irrigation technologies and management strategies. However, we've never had a project that's combined all facets together. I've always wanted to see the irrigation efficiency married to my cultural practices. When they approached me about that, I really wanted to see exactly how far we can go. In the past, we would plant a crop, say a summer crop, and then we were done until the spring. In the wintertime, it just sat here, bare. Now, I want something growing all the time. So when we harvest our summer crop, we plant a winter crop, such as cereal, the rye, or the wheat, just to keep that carbon source going to try to build this mulch on the ground. When we get our first freeze, it's gonna die, and it'll be a, a mulch, basically, over the winter to help catch snow and hold moisture and then next year we will plant corn directly into this without touching it. Speaking as a soil scientist as well as a farmer's wife, I see the benefits of conservation practice. I also see that maybe there are some areas that we need to address from a research standpoint. The other thing I do is I am using crop rotation. I very seldom will ever plant the same crop two years in a row. You want to have that balance and that helps to keep the carbon cycle going and the microbes are able to feed on that. Probably the next step for me personally is to understand this microbial interaction we're having with the cover crops and the mulch and the roots. Hey Brent. How are you Braden? We feel that these management strategies when combined we're going to show that the system is more water efficient, more energy efficient, and more profitable to the grower in the field. I'm skeptical about cover crops because I am in a limited moisture area and because I don't know if it's worth giving that moisture to a crop that's not going to produce any revenue. I think they're awesome. You just In this project, the farmers are using a multitude of irrigation technologies and, and practices through the Natural Resources Conservation Service, uh, such as uh, soil moisture probes and an upgraded center pivot system to increase their irrigation efficiency. I definitely think that they're worth time and effort and money. This system has what's called a LEPA, which LEPA stands for Low Energy Precision Application. It's currently in the spray mode, which is this. We use it in this mode to ensure germination of crops. But after we get the crop going, we take this pad and we flip it over. And it just dribbles the water on the ground. It helps drive the water deeper in the soil, which is what we want in a growing crop situation. This is probably 90 to 95% efficient. Whereas in the spray mode, especially the higher up the spray nozzles go, you can get down to 60 or 70% efficiency. It costs a lot of money to pump this water, so we want to get as much of it in the ground that we can. Because what goes up in the air is evaporation. It's just lost money and loss of a precious resource. One of the questions that growers have is when we plant a cover crop, is it using up more water than it's saving us? So we really want to look at the total water 
use by the crop and available to the crop. And to do that, we have to measure it. This weather station is keeping track of rainfall. It's helping tell us what our evaporation is every day. And we're comparing that with our probes, right. which we're using in the field that tell us how far we're driving the moisture in the soil. So with the combination of these two things, right. it's really helping us keep up with where we're at on a crop. It surprises you sometimes. There's times when you think the crop's using a lot of water and it's not. And then there's also the opposite of that. There's times where you don't think the crop's using a lot of water and it's using a lot. Now that you've started to convert this farm to no-till, can you tell a big difference yet? Um, I mean, we're starting to for sure, I think. I think one more year and I'll really kind of know you can get another corn crop on it and see. Farming out here with the climate where we live in, it's a big puzzle and there's many pieces to it. And I just hope to provide some of my neighbors and other producers some extra pieces to their puzzle and help them to be able to conserve water on their farm. We hope that the results from this research are not only going to benefit the American farmer and the generations to follow that farmer, but also the American public. Because through these conservation practices, farmers are enhancing the sustainability of farming operations.